Well hello everybody and welcome to the flight of your life, it's Captain Gab. Today's video is going to be showing you a charter flight from beautiful Broome, in Western Australia where I flew charter and scenic flights for approximately 8 months after I finished flight instructing. Broome is such a lovely place, I encourage you to go and visit one day and if you're looking for your first job it is one of the most magical places you could possibly find yourself in for your first job in aviation. We're flying over to beautiful Columbaroo where Columbaroo Mission is, it's one of the oldest indigenous settlements in Australia and the flight time is around about two and a half hours in the Cessna 210 Centurion on which we're flying today. It's about 800 kilometres and about 335 nautical miles. We'll be taking two Indigenous Elders back to their community where they're going to be conducting a meeting to discuss some of the Indigenous there we go. Miami rights. Thanks to I hope you, you enjoy the video out. and I hope you find it useful. Thanks All for right. watching. Have a great day. Do, 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 do. Clear. Well, good morning guys and girls, YouTubers, aviatrixes and aviators, hope you're all well. So I'm just here at work, I'm gonna iron my shirt, make sure that's all nice and straight, and uh, then I'm gonna go quickly uh, print off the weather, put that into my plan, go out to the aircraft, set everything up, set the camera up, and then, uh, yeah, get going. All right, so I've logged into Napes and printed off the weather. And I print six pages on one sheet just because I have very sharp vision and I can read this. Anyway, I've um, had a look at the weather, assessed the areas that I'm going to be flying in and what it means to me in terms of the cloud, the winds. Got my Before we start our pre-flight inspection, we're going to first of all clean the aircraft windows. It's giving the windscreen It's advisable that you use a microfiber cloth or a shop rag rather than paper towel. And it's also not advised to use Windex. We use Mr. Sheen and it works fantastically. It's important to avoid the screen up and down side to side. Now we're going to enter into the cockpit. We're going to turn the battery master switch on, lower the flaps, change the fuel selector valve so we can then conduct our pre-flight inspection. You can think of the pre-flight inspection as the first large opportunity to inspect the aircraft for any potential damage or defects prior to actually taking the aircraft up into the air. It's definitely not the last chance however to inspect the aircraft. If in doubt at any stage before you take off, if you're in doubt of anything, shut the aircraft down and go and inspect the aircraft before you go flying. In the Cessna 210, we typically conduct our pre-flight inspection starting from the left side of the aircraft at the front and then making our way to the back. We inspect such a thing as the oil quantity, we make sure the oil caps are on nice and securely. We check the main landing gear for any defects or damage. We, check, we then check the leading edge of the wing. We undo certain things such as the PO tube protection cover. Put that back on in broom. Insects love to actually build nests faster than you can blink. We check the ailerons for their serviceability, the connecting rods that connect to the flight controls. We check the flaps and the various linkages for that. We then come around to the rear of the aircraft and check the empennage, the vertical fin, the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator. Make sure we give that a nice shake up and down on the horizontal stabilizer to ensure its structural integrity. And then we go to the vertical actual rudder, inspect that as well. And then we then proceed around to the right hand side of the aircraft and then pretty much do the same thing we've done on the left hand side. Whenever you move a flight control surface on your external inspection you should also be looking inside the cockpit to see that the actual control yokes, uh, control yoke moves corresponding to the movement of the control surface. After we've done the main inspection we'll then test our fuel by doing a fuel drain. Unfortunately I don't have footage of that to show you but we'll test our fuel as well and then we're ready for our final inspection of the aircraft before we actually go flying called our stupidity checks. We check to make sure the guide down or tie down ropes are removed. We make sure that the pedo tube cover is removed. We also check our oil one last time just to make sure we do have the correct oil quantity in there and to ensure there's no leaks and then we take out our chocks 
put those into the aircraft and you're going to see very shortly why they're called stupidity checks. I'm actually subjecting myself here to you guys to show you that sometimes you can forget things, depends if you're rushed or not. And my advice is don't rush uh, at any stage throughout your flying career. Probably the biggest advice I can give you is don't rush. Make sure you inspect the aircraft well before you get into it. So here we are in the cockpit. Now, I'm going to go through various checks here. I'm basically increasing my mixture, getting ready to start, putting the propeller pitch to fine position, masters on. I'm going to prime the aircraft fuel for a little bit with the fuel pump before I then crank over the engine. Now, you mentioned, you heard me mention before about stupidity checks, about the chocks. You're going to see very shortly why we call them stupidity checks, and I'm subjecting myself here for your entertainment and my embarrassment to show you that sometimes you can forget things. It depends if you're rushed. One of my advice is, is don't rush anything when it comes to doing your pre-flight inspection. I read a very good article once by a senior captain of a major airline. He said that he never even goes out with his watch on his wrist, so he's not pressured by time constraints. Here's one of my work colleagues here, kindly removing my chocks for me. Trust me, that was embarrassing. I think I ended up having to buy a whole case of beer for the team just because of that incident. I'm tuning in my radio, setting up my GPS to help give me some navigation guidance, guidance as I fly over to Colombo Mission today. After the engine's warming up for about a couple of minutes, we go through some checklists, set up the aircraft correctly before we then proceed to start our taxi. Headset comes on. We'll now communicate to air traffic control that we're ready for taxi to get clearance. Before moving away from the actual tarmac, it's a very important thing to make sure that the surrounding area is clear. We're going to be checking left, checking right, checking centre before we increase the power. see some of the aircraft fleet on the right hand side here from my company King Leopold Air that I used to work for and then you can see some seaplanes coming up. Oh, this is an interesting one. The attitude indicator looks like it's failed. Well in this case it's not. It's just a weak vacuum pump. I checked the attitude indicator during my run-ups. The vacuum gauge which you can see there. Once I run up the RPM the vacuum comes into its normal range and the attitude indicator indicates as per normal. In this case, during a VFR flight, beautiful weather, I'm not too concerned about losing my attitude indicator as I can clearly see the blue sky and I can see the ground ground below me. We're ready for takeoff. I'm going to leave you guys to watch this place. So enjoy.
cloud you can see there is, is what is known as scattered cumulus. There's a nice gap in between each cloud that we can easily descend down below them without actually having to go through any cloud as we're only operating via bar. Visual flying rules. We're below the cloud base now. Typically once you get below the cloud base that's where the bumps really start to happen. All the turbulence, all that energy has risen and converted into those clouds. Above the clouds it's usually pretty stable above these clouds. Okay, we're about to turn onto final now. We're on about the base leg coming into Clonbury mission. At this stage, I'll be preparing the aircraft for landing. I'll be doing such things as the full landing checklist, making sure my lights are on. I'll be extending some flap to slow down the aircraft. My landing gear is out by this stage as well. Right now, I'm paying very close attention to my aiming point, which is a position on the runway. That's where the aircraft will impact if I don't do anything about it. We do do something, of course, at the end there, but that aiming point is vital to stay in the same position. So we come fast to a round out, we start to pull back on the control column to arrest that descent rate. That in turn slows the aircraft down. I will be back at idle at that stage. The aircraft keeps reducing airspeed, keep pulling back, touch down. In this case, my landing, I came over the threshold a little bit too fast. That increased my landing distance, unfortunately. So here we are at Columbia Mission. Welcome. I'm going to shut the aircraft down, unload my passengers. They're going to get the shuttle into town. They're being picked up while I wrap up the flight, um, close the aircraft down, tie it up, and then I'm going to show you my walk into town. Okay. Welcome. Well, g'day. Um, I'm back in Columbaroo now, Columbaroo Mission. I've just taken the two elders that I brought in yesterday back to the community. Um, the gentleman has to meet with uh, some of the uh, traditional council um, executives. And uh, the lovely lady has to go to the police station to um, have a meeting there about something. So. Uh, Anyway, there's no car here to pick me up, so I'm just going to walk into town. It's uh, probably about one and a half kilometres into town, so not too far. Nice walk, good exercise. Anyway, had a good night in um, Truscott last night. It's an interesting place to stay. It's pretty much just a fly-in, fly-out base with nothing more than uh, sort of portable um, rooms or dongers. But a uh, really good buffet, really good food there. There's a gym, I didn't get to use that. There's a pool as well, I didn't use that just because of the time constraint, didn't have much time. Um, so yeah, my passengers today have indicated they want to get out at about three o'clock and I thought, uh, hang on, that's a bit late because I won't be able to get back to Broome. So I said to them, oh, look, I'll let them know the latest so I can depart here. Um, and that, that way they can uh, then make the decision if they want to come today or not. Anyway. Alright, so I'm leaving Columbaroo now. I've had a real last minute change of plan, um, a complete change up to my manifest, um, which had to be really quickly worked out to see if I can get back to Broome first of all before last light, and then working out the fuel, which uh, I'm sort of on top of right now. So uh, heading back to the airport now, uh, Mick's going to refuel the aircraft to full tanks. Hopefully we'll be able to get away um, just in time there. So all running, all running to schedule and I'll get back into Broome before last light. Anyway, lots of fun. Hello again. So I've uh, filled up the full tanks now. Thanks to Mick, the town sort of maintenance guy and refueler. I'm just waiting for these passengers to show up now. I've got three to take down to Mitchell Plateau. Um, but I'm happy that now I've got enough fuel to uh, make it all the way back to Broome. Now it's just a matter of uh, on time performance, I guess. Making sure everyone shows up on time. A bit hard to uh, control that, unfortunately. So, may possibly be staying another night. Um, most likely in Derby. Wind's picking up. Windy. Wind's off. Uh, just put it in there. So, uh, 
can get off the ground nice and early, which is good. Yeah, lots of fun. This is all about what charter's like. So I'm glad you can experience a little. I'm glad I can show you a little bit uh, about what it's all about. mission off to a few more destinations before we head back home and eventually back to Brew. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if I made it back or not, I can't really remember. Probably had to overnight in Derby. I hope this video has been useful for you. You've had a bit of an insight into the day-to-day -day operations of a charter pilot in the Australian Outback. hope it's uh, sparked your interest to become a pilot and perhaps go off to do charter flying as opposed to doing instructing. Uh, both obviously are fantastic options. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and enjoy the rest of the video. If you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great to have you. Have a great day. See you later.